Garden City High School's band consists of 170 musicians. They sit in a room that head band director Paul White said was okay for a hundred or so. And it's still okay for that many people, he said, but not for all the stands, chairs, uniforms, and instruments he also has to fit into the music building. There are a couple of storage rooms, which students use to practice in small groups. But still, White says, it would be nice if they could figure out something to do to improve facilities. The band room isn't the only place at Garden City High School that staff, and some students, say is overcrowded. A committee has been meeting for the past two months to figure out what to do with the facility. They've been considering many options, including adding on to the current high school, replacing the high school, creating a ninth grade center, building a second high school, establishing ninth, tenth, and eleventh, twelfth grade centers, implementing year-round school, moving ninth graders to three middle schools, establishing two shifts in a day, consolidating with another district, or taking no action. There are 1,906 students at GCHS, according to the headcount the school district does on September 20th for funding purposes. That's about 100 less than a peak in 2003, when there were 2,013 students. But before 2003, the population had been on the rise. There were 1,886 students in 1999, 1,887 in 2000, 1,912 in 2001, 1,926 in 2002. The school has tried to accommodate for a growing population with 11 additions and renovations since the initial building was constructed in 1954. Those include Clifford Hope Auditorium, Memorial Stadium, J.D. Adams Hall, the Music Building, and enclosure of a courtyard. It also has added seven trailers containing 11 classrooms. Now, the building is 257,179 square feet, including the trailers. It is built on 18 acres. The school district has tried, too, to build a second high school. It put a $30 million bond issue on the ballot in 1998. That failed, with 2,206 residents voting yes, 4,176 voting no. The district tried again in 2000 with a $33 million bond issue. That failed with 3,479 voting yes, 4,890 voting no. None of the renovations have widened hallways, which administrators say is a problem. Some students also complain of crowding in the hallways, and they don't even bother trying to use their lockers. But others say it's not as bad as people make it out to be. They find alternate routes to avoid congestion, and they still make it to class on time. There are 107 classrooms at Garden City High School for 120 teachers. That means not everyone gets a classroom, and some, the traveling teachers, push materials on a cart to whatever classroom is theirs for the hour, displacing whoever normally would use that room. 17.8% of classrooms are in use all day long. The average class at Garden City High School has 25 students. Some classes, especially those at upper levels and those in the special education program, are very small. Because of the space those take up, other classes get bigger. Biggest of all are the physical education classes some of which have 40 or 50 students, according to PE Department Director Brad Baskew. There might be 150 PE students in several classes during any given hour. And after some locker room congestion, they usually have places to go, like the wrestling room, weight room, track, or football field. But when the weather gets bad, things get rough, Baskew said. Some students say the numbers in PE aren't a problem, and that there's plenty of space in the various rooms available. A few, however, so the locker room situation is less than ideal. High numbers aren't a problem in all classes. Some, like Patsy Ford's interior design and apparel design classes, are limited to 22 students because that's how many computers and sewing machines fit in her room. However, student interest in Ford's department, occupational, family, and consumer science, has been blossoming and numbers have been doubling, tripling, even quadrupling in recent years. That's especially the case for Karen Burden's food service and production program. She said her program used to focus on preparing future homemakers and consumers, but now it has shifted to a focus on preparing food service professionals, from chefs to restaurant managers. When students graduate, they're ready to manage a mid-sized restaurant or go to culinary school, she said. Burden's concern is that the kitchens her students use are like those in a typical family home, not a restaurant, even though she's teaching industrial food standards. 
This is her makeshift three compartment industrial sink for washing dishes. It would cost about $170,000 to install plumbing and electricity to upgrade the room so it could handle industrial sinks and microwaves, according to the school district. Equipment is an issue in other classes too. Not all science classes have lab equipment, and in the classrooms that do, it's often only a few stations that several students have to share. Welding classrooms, which are also used by Garden City Community College, have equipment limitations as well. No more than eight welders can work at a time because the ventilation system can't handle any more, according to Principal James Morales. Projections for the future are uncertain. Cohort survival ratios, which educators use to project enrollment, show that if recent trends hold up, Garden City High School's population will continue on a slight downward slope. At the same time, Deputy Superintendent Steve Carlin points to some anomalies in the numbers that lead him to believe the decline could stabilize or even head in the other direction. Recent efforts to decrease dropouts have allowed GCHS to hold on to students longer, he said. The high school's graduation rate varies, but is up from several years ago. It was 61.2% in 2001, then headed up to a 2004 peak of 87.5%. In 2006, it was down slightly to 83.2%. Regardless of recent trends, committee members wonder whether potential economic booms will bring in new waves of students and what kinds of mandates will come from the government in the future. They also discuss whether the facilities they have to offer will be enough to attract teachers during a shortage in the state and whether taxpayers will be willing to pay for new or improved buildings. A citizen survey is in the Garden City Telegram and the offices of schools so members of the public can give their input. The Board of Education will meet October 27th to plot out a direction for facilities at USD 457 Garden City.